All right, so you're just in time for another eBay antique item unboxing. And uh, I saw this and I had to buy it now and I grabbed it. It was just listed and I said, let me get this before somebody else snatches it up. Now how it works on eBay is, if, is uh, as soon as you see something and somebody had just listed it, listed it and it has any slight potential that somebody else could grab it ahead of you, you have to do a buy it now. Sometimes leaving you to no time to really think, you know, is this a good item or is this, you know what I mean? Something that's just mediocre. Um, sometimes, you know, you have to like really pounce on these things quick because as fast as you saw it, somebody else has seen it too. And I'm trying to get this open and hold on. I don't want you guys to see my address <laughs> and it's on the other side of the box. So let's, ow, I just like stabbed myself. And so that's what happens with a lot of these products. Sometimes uh, you have to think immediately. And if you don't have the money, that really sucks. Um, because if you don't have the money uh, and somebody else gets something that's really good, um, it breaks your heart. Because you'll like say, okay, maybe in three days I'll have my, you know, the money on my credit card. And uh, if you don't pounce instantaneously on a lot of these things, somebody else is going to get a really good bargain. So a lot of times I have to actually beg my husband. Um, and I mean, I'm not kidding you, like sit there literally begging him. So please just like advance me the money and I'll come up with some way to pay him back. All right. So I saw this. This was dirty, but I figured I can clean it. It's not a problem. And these things at retail, I cannot afford so for $22 here, I said, oh my God, I better get this. Oh, wow. Okay. This is really absolutely gorgeous. So I don't know if you can see this, but do you see these beautiful topaz, by the way, my birthstone, <laughs> uh, little crystals. And right in the center we have, I'm going to pronounce it probably incorrectly, but it's French. Uh, it's an enamel called galache and uh, really quite gorgeous with this beautiful flower design now we see uh these topazes along with what looks like some kind of like opals don't know if these are real i highly doubt that they're real on the other side we have this gorgeous gorgeous look at this uh detail and this can be cleaned a little simicrone is all you need and what i liked about it was it has this little button don't know if you can see that you press it and it should pop open this little and let's see what it is and if I can get it open that would be splendid oh there we go and I don't want you to see me on camera but we have a mirror and we have a receptacle and uh this is actually a powder box and uh okay so hold on one second yeah so this is a powder box I don't want you to see my mug and I was actually concerned that powder would have been placed in here this is late Victorian early 20th century and so on this side right here would be powder, uh, possibly pressed powder or loose powder. And there would be like a little powder puff in it. So I was like, well, darn, it doesn't come with the powder puff. Generally those go missing. Um, nine times out of 10, you will never see them. And, uh, okay. So here's what I did. So I got these powder puffs on Amazon and they were plain. They did not have this, uh, satin ribbon or this little rose, uh, little thing. I actually added this. And I got two different sizes and there's another one. And I added the rose and I added the little rhinestone to give it almost that ribbon, antique ribbon style design. Let's see if these fit, if any of these fit in here. Okay. So this one's a little too small and let's see if the other one is a good size for it. And look at that. That is unbelievable because it actually fits perfectly in here. All right. Let's close it up and see if it actually closes. And that could be a problem. Um, it feels like there's something in this side. Um, let's look over here. I don't know if this little tab opened and there was something in there. But I don't really want to mess with this. It feels like something should have been in the top as well. So let's see if this will close. Let's hope it will close. And it might not. Okay, no problem. So we got option number two. And uh, that's why I always have a, a backup for the backup. And there we go. Let's close it. And it won't close. Well, son of a bitch. Wait, hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now we have, have a powder puff. Now, generally, country of origin. Aha. 
Well, where was this made? Uh, there's plenty of different places this could have been made. One being France, <laughs> the other uh, being Austria. Yes, a lot of these were made in Austria. Czechoslovakia, otherwise known at the time as Bohemia. Um, Germany. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like uh, Vienna, Austria. I mean, we have a lot of different places this could have been made. And uh, wow, I'm really marveling at this. This can be cleaned. I don't know if I'm going to clean it. I could clean it with some Simicrone, um, take away the tarnish, but I won't. And uh, let's see if there is any, um, by the way, this powder puff is making it so it doesn't close completely. Um, that could be a bit of a problem. I might have to take it out. Let's try to press down on it. Yeah, um, believe it or not, the little ribbon um, is making it so it doesn't close perfectly. But that's really not a problem. Now, you have to really look these over. I'm going to look it over carefully for markings, and I'll be right back. Now, I looked it over really, really carefully. Sometimes in teeny tiny little letters hidden somewhere in the metal, it'll say like France or Austria or Bohemia, Czechoslovakia. And I do not see anything anywhere. So this is European. Most likely, like I said, what it could be is French, Austrian, or Czechoslovakian. Um, I don't think it's American. Uh, I'm going to actually try to clean it a little up with some Simicrone. Um, try to take some of this black, black and tarnish off of it. We're going to start with a, a test of the inside. We'll see how it handles the Simicrone on the inside. And then if it works well then we will clean the outside. And then I'm gonna show you value. And what do these things sell for? What did I get uh, for $22? Okay, I just cleaned it slightly with Simicrone. I didn't wanna to go too much. And uh, I cleaned it with a toothbrush and a little Dawn dishwashing detergent, uh, very lightly with a soft bristle toothbrush. And look, um, oh my God, how shiny this is. This is outrageously beautiful. 22 doll hairs and again now you can really see the gems and we have like a half moon we have some filigree we have the topaz stones and i don't know if these are little opals but um probably not real precious stones again the czechs were known for uh making these uh gorgeous uh beads or rhinestones or gems also the austrians i'm thinking this is probably austrian and uh, let's check out the value of these type of powder boxes and they're very hard to find especially with the guillotine and the uh, galash in the center, and I call it guillotine, but it's galash, and uh, you can see that gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous enamel work, and again this uh, lovely, lovely, lovely uh, gem, uh, gemstone design going around it. Um, yeah, again, look how shiny this is now. This is unbelievable. Cleaned up real well. All right, let's check out the values of these, and now you'll know why I had no choice but to hit the buy it now button on this. Otherwise, it would be gone, real gone, gone with the wind. So I've been doing a lot of research, and my research comes back to that this is Austro-Hungarian. Now, uh, what is that? It's a time when uh, it was uh, referred to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was Austria and Hungary. Um, it was a dual monarchy, uh, basically of Austro and Hungarian compromises. Uh, and it was around from 1867 to 1918. Okay, so how did I come to this conclusion? Let's check out how. Okay, so take a look at all these jeweled boxes. And again, these are uh, Austro-Hungarian jeweled boxes with these gorgeous filigree designs or brass with this lovely, lovely, lovely gemstone type of pieces that were attached to many, many different kinds of boxes. So now we know that this was made uh, between 1867 and 1918. This is actually much older than I originally thought when I said early 20th century. Well, the 1918 time frame is the early 20th century, but I assume that this was actually possibly into the 20s. So let's check out some items. Uh, let's go ahead and let's click on, for example, this item. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so this is a jeweled casket box uh, with cabochons and gems on it with that gorgeous uh, brass or ormolu, $280. And these are tiny little boxes. Uh, these aren't anything that's really large. And here's another item. And this, wow, and it has a, I don't pronounce it correctly, I know I don't, but galosh or galosh in the center of the enamel work. And we have these gems all over it. 
being sold as an antique Austrian round jewel box for $447. These are tiny palm-sized boxes. And let's continue to look. They came in different designs. Um, some came in treasure boxes. Now that is absolutely insanely beautiful. Will I ever dream or ever probably be lucky enough to find one for 22 doll hairs on eBay? Probably not <laughs> because these sell for a heck of a lot of money. Here's another example. Um, look at that. Okay. Oh my God. That is beautiful. Let's check out, uh, for example, this item here. Okay. And here we go. It's a Austrian and it's signed by the way. A uh, jeweled hinged box compact, 225 doll hairs. And now we go into the Google image search box. Uh, I typed in antique Austrian jeweled box. That's all I typed in. And we have loads of them. Here we go. Ruby Lane, out of stock. How much was this little box uh, being sold for? Holy guacamole, $1,045. It sold. This little tiny little hinged box sold for almost $1,050. Oh, okay. All right, now we're getting someplace. Uh, here's another one. Ruby Lane, $195. Interesting. Okay, so we're learning something, aren't we, boys and girls? And we're learning that I got a hell of a deal. Here we go. First dibs. Uh, Austrian Jeweled Box. Um, Wow, that's really pretty. And it's very small. Uh, 588 doll hairs. And yet here's some other ones. Impressive Antique Jeweled Austrian Box. It's a small powder box. 499 doll hairs and to the right of it another one for 299 doll hairs uh, wow all right and we have more wow look at these these are just absolutely stunning and uh what's it being sold on poshmark 2150 dollars for an antique austrian bronze enameled jewel box these were never actually oversized or large either and again here is another jewel box very small by the way Selling for $1,150, Austrian bronze jewel box. Now this one dated 1930. I think this is earlier than 1930, but I can't argue with other dealers. Uh, it's their impression of how old something is. Wow, look at this, Austrian jeweled box. Um, this is stunning. How much is this one selling for on first dibs? First, first dibs actually is for a uh, very, very, very wealthy clientele. It is gone because it is actually sold out. Here we go, Austrian silver jewel, uh, jewel box, $1,075, circa 1900. This one is the drum that we saw earlier for 582 doll hairs. And so we have some more Austrian little boxes here with the gems and jewels, 447. This one for $650 for a little jewel box, one made out of glass and with the ormolu and the jewels, $447 on sale, might I add. And I don't know if we saw this one already, but I just found another little jewel box. Um, this one out of stock, sold for 1,200 doll hairs. Okay, and here's one with galosh and jewels, and this is a powder compact, $495. So you gotta be careful because sometime in the 1940s, there was a revival of these jeweled boxes that were Austrian. So uh, make sure that you don't get uh, sort of tricked into thinking it's a real antique and uh you know that you might pay top dollar for this one <laughs> i just thought you guys would like to see this little antique treasure box yeah that's beautiful right oh my god i just love beautiful things and uh so what would i sell this for by the way this is from the 1870s this jewel box um what would i sell this for what have we learned um what have we learned boys and girls uh this is a hard one Okay, so, hmm, let's take it over into the light. What would I sell this for if I had an Etsy shop? All right, you want the honest truth? I would not sell it for less than five to $600. Why? Because the truth is I really don't want to sell it. So I would leave it in the store, let it marinate. It might take a year or two or three. And somebody with deep pocketbooks uh, would come rolling around and pay the five or $600. But if you found this in a thrift shop, uh, what should you sh uh, flip it for on, like, I don't know, Fleabay? Uh, $175, $150, but it'll sit there a while on, on Fleabay. Because everybody on Fleabay is looking for a bargain. If uh, you want to sell it quick, 
Uh, 70 bucks, 80 bucks. Yes, I'm not kidding you. Uh, that's really, really ridiculous because these are worth a hell of a lot more than 70 bucks. But if I was to list it in my Etsy shop, like I used to list antiques, um, yeah, it would eventually sell to somebody who is rich and wealthy. And I've had quite a few actual uh, celebrities buy things from me, very wealthy celebrities. Um, I won't tell you who they are because uh, I want to keep them anonymous for their sake. And uh, yeah, so pretty much I would uh, place something in my shop that would say worth $300. Put a price tag of $500, $600 on it, and it would sell. Like this one lady, I put this antique opaline box, and it was like half the size of this, in my shop for $800. And its value is only $400. And uh, some lady bought it. And I was like, what, what? Uh, and then I had to print up a shipping label and guess where she lived beverly hills yes beverly hills california and i googled her house because i'm a nosy fuck like that and her house was 8.5 million dollars so she could have afforded it so basically the prices for antiques are subjective that's what you're learning so you might get a dr Lori that goes well it sold for 36 dollars and 95 cents on ebay and that's the value. No, no, no. Uh-uh. There's always an ass for every seat. So remember that. So I would put a value of 500 doll hairs on this. Uh, and that's it. That's my final, final, final answer. And what else have we learned, boys and girls? We've learned that if you see something as good as this on eBay, uh, would have buy it now for $22 free shipping. Wake your husband up at 3 a.m. Yes, wake him. Actually pour a uh, bottle, bottled water over his head and rouse him from sleep and say, dude, you have to get down the stairs quickly. Place your credit card into the shopping cart on eBay and buy this shit for me because I cannot let anybody else get it. And uh, yes, well, I didn't pour the water over his head, but I did wake him up at 3 a.m. And so we also learn that this is Austro-Hungarian, circa 1899 to 1918. Beautiful jeweled powder box. Thanks for watching. See you guys all soon and so long.